Hi everybody, I'm Janet Prensky, here today to talk with the one, the only, my dear friend, and the one of the world's best authors, as far as I'm concerned, and many of her followers are concerned, Miss Alice Hoffman, live from her living room in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Janet, good to see you. Hi, likewise. You know, Alice, I'm particularly excited about this because this means that for the next 10 or 15 minutes, I won't be eating. Which, <laughs> yeah, I just made a cake. Come over, you, have some. I, tell me, are, because I don't see you as a baker. So is this a new thing since the pandemic? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is a new thing. Yeah, and how is the eating going in general? It, uh, mine's out of control. <laughs> it's very successful, <laughs> and I'm doing it. The problem for me is I had eggs that I had to use today. So I had to make, I had to figure out a, a, lots of things to do with eggs. So, You're a, so. don't get crazy. Have you been having the same challenges with grocery shopping that the world is having? I mean, uh, fun. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's just very sad time. And I feel like, you know, I'm just kind of retreating into books and trying to stay in contact, which is hard to do, as you know, but, and, you know, just doing the best I can, just as everyone is. Do you find that you're busy? Are you busy? I feel like I'm busier. Because even though I've been homeworking, all these other people are now homeworking and they seem to want to take breaks or they want to have, they want to get together during the day. And I'm used to kind of being alone and people want to work more for some reason right now. So I think it feels like you're, you're accomplishing something. I agree. I think that's true. And I always thought that if anyone could survive, and I think I talked to you about the social isolation, it would be a writer because by your nature, obviously you don't really mingle much to get your job done. Uh, but is even this a little much? It's much. It's really because I have a great group of friends and I see them all the time. And it's just, I, I find the, the less I'm in touch with people, the less I want to be in touch with people. And I think, you know, we all have to kind of work to not have that happen and not feel alienated and alone. And, um, you know, really the major high point of my day is, is you know, watching uh, Netflix. <laughs> what can I say? Well, you're like the rest of America then. <laughs> I'm not for Netflix, right? Now, what about, are you using any of like the tele, do you do telehealth or anything like that? Are you turning to some of that yoga or anything or? No, I'm just glad that, you know, my dog has illness is an angel memorial hospital is so amazing here in Boston. So they have a setup where you can bring your dog and drop her off at the, you know, at the door and someone will come go get her and from inside. Oh, really? really oh, wow. Terrific. That's great. That's great. I have, you know, obviously without being able to uh, go to exercise classes or anything like that, I have turned a bit to like tele yoga and things like that. Not quite the same, but no, it's something. No, I actually, I do yoga and meditation online. Oh, you so, do? Yeah, like three times a week. Wow. So that's really good. You must, are you in good shape? Hey, I'm busy. <laughs> in good shape i'm loving it now what about writing are you in the middle of the next book are you wrapping up a book where are you in that hole well two things i'm wrapping up a book that's coming out in october called magic lessons and i have this kind of magic series that started with practical magic so that's the third book and now i'm in the midst of writing the fourth book so so do you normally are you a juggler like that you'll wrap one up and then you'll be starting the next that's how it goes yeah. huh? Yeah, look, I have plenty of time right now, so I might as well do it now. <laughs> I should be writing something, right? I should take that. Everyone should be. <laughs> for everyone to write that novel that they always said they were going to write. I know. So when you think about happiness as an author, and I'm sure there's up and down times, et cetera, mm -hmm. if you were to pick your happiest time, I was thinking, would it be like the first time you sold a book, the first time you saw a book in a bookstore and it was like official or the first check you got for a book or the day you found out you were an Oprah book club selection. What was, what would you say? For me, it was the day that I got my acceptance to the Stanford university writing program. That really? was, it was kind of my escape from the life I'd led. It, I didn't expect it at all. And I didn't apply for a fellowship and they gave me one. So I was, and I was moving to California and I was 21. So, Wait, 
if I could go back to that day right now, I wouldn't have second. And I'd be a lot smarter. And from that experience, that program birthed your first book, basically? Right, everything happened. I had a great professor and really a mentor who like completely changed my life, sent my first story to a friend of his who had a magazine in New York at City College. I mean, I just would, I don't think I'd be anywhere without him. And I just think it, it so matters, you know, who takes an interest in you when you're young and who, who becomes a mentor to you. So, and the weird thing is, you know, I live in his house now accidentally. <gasps> That's weird. No, it's weird. It's kind of like an Alice Hoffman book. It's totally weird. But I'm living oh, here. And that was serendipity? You had no idea? No idea. Oh, wow. That is weird. Yeah. That is, now, because, but because of that experience, not the, not the home part, but do you mentor a lot? Do you find yourself in that position now to pay back? Well, you know, I haven't been a professor. I have, I ta I have taught occasionally, you know, for limited amounts of time, because I think to be a really good teacher, you have to be really selfless and you wind up not writing that much for most people, not everybody, but I mean, it is a sacrifice. So, you know, I do it on a limited basis. I help to fund a, a couple of things, including something at Adelphi University in New York, where I went um, as an undergraduate, we have a program for high school juniors every summer. Um, you know, I, I, I'm involved, but I'm not a teacher because I yeah. realized from having a great teacher, he spent a lot of time with his students work. And you know, I just wasn't willing to do that. Yeah. Yet I'm sure, I mean, I see when I go to your readings, I see a lot of young people who really do look up to you. So sometimes we can mentor without that necessarily one-on-one -on -one teaching. I yeah. think you are. Yeah. Thank you. And I am in touch with, with a lot of people, but I'm just not giving like a, I'm not teaching in a university. I'm not committed like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Sure. Now, in addition to writing, uh, I, you and I have worked together on many projects. You are, in fact, a, a breast cancer survivor, 20 years, if I'm not mistaken. 20 years. 20 years. Mm -hmm. Mazel tov, mazel tov. That's so awesome. It is awesome. And part of that experience uh, became the Hoffman Breast Center at Mount Auburn Hospital, uh, for which uh, you and I have worked for many years on an annual event called Pink Pages. Now, obviously, you know, this year we won't have a Pink Pages because of all that's going on. But do you mind talking a little bit about the event and your work with the hospital? I mean, for me, it's been such an honor and such a great experience. When I was going through my treatment, I was in, so in awe of the doctors and the nurses and the technicians and everybody who really dedicated their lives to, to, to health and wellness, as is happening right now again. And I just was, I felt like I wanted to do something. And the most the best idea I had was that I could raise some money and involve some friends. And actually over 20 years, we have had so many amazing writers give up their time for nothing. I mean, they don't get anything. All of the funds that we make go directly to the um, Hoffman Breast Center at Mount Auburn. And there's been such generosity of spirit among the writers community. It's been amazing. And I think people have gotten used to, you know, they look forward to this event. It's really not like any other event. We usually have about six writers and they don't read from their books, which you can kind of see anywhere. They do something special, which is, you know, they talk about their lives. They, they give us something emotional and special and it's a very bonding, uniting and, and fun um, evening. And we've been having it at the American Repertory Theater for the last few years. They've been great partners to us, so generous. And I just feel like there's such a good feeling when you walk into this event. I just don't think it's like anything else. I hear that all the time. I, I've often heard people say, I am so tired of the dinners. You know, the fundraising dinners that I go to. This event is a bright light. You it know, a, it, it's a show, really, but it's also very inclusive. And, you know, the, the, the audience is made up of, of book lovers and cancer survivors and doctors and nurses. And it's a, it's a really great event. I'm going to miss it this year, but we'll have it next year. We will have it in 2021. <laughs> And we may try and do a little something via Zoom like you and I are doing now on yeah, the night of the event yeah. with Joyce Kohaywick, our hostess for many, many, all our time. Amazing. It was the best. And maybe Ann Leary or we'll see some author might join you. Yes, Ann Leary, who's like so funny and so talented. And she said that she would join us and we're going to have a good time that night. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad that Pink Pages will go on. It's a very important event. Oh. And 
and Breast Center, which I go to, I am a patient of, uh, means a lot to me personally and a lot to a lot of women out there. So thank you for that, for sure. Oh, it's my pleasure. And you know, we're having a newsletter about, about all of the authors who would have been there so that people get to know their works and see very special things that they can't see anywhere else with interviews that are nowhere else. And I think it's really fun for people to see and get to really know these authors. And I love the name of it. The Weekly yes, Reader. The weekly Reader. <laughs> <laughs> Remember it that? Took me back. It took me That's back right. to those fun days. Yeah. That's right. We have something to look forward to every week when we read exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, uh, when we post this interview on the uh, Pine Hills newsletter, where people are seeing it right now, there'll be a link to the weekly reader on the bottom, as well as a link to allow people to donate if they want to the Hoffman Breast Center and help that effort as well. Oh, that's so. great. Thank you so yeah. much. It's very special. It's a very special place, I think. Uh, and then I think that we'll have to wrap this up, although I have many, many questions for you, Alice Hoffman. You know that. But I we'll heard talk it. Later. We'll talk again. Yeah, we'll talk again. We'll talk again. Listen, this also gives us a chance to go back and eat because it's been at least five, ten minutes since last we ate something, right? I have to check my cake because it's gluten free, so I have no idea what it's going to be like. God help us all. Are you gluten free now? I think so. half and half. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Well, listen, let me add that there, uh, I think it was about five or six years ago, you came to the Pine Hills and- uh, it. It's so much fun. And it was so great. We, you read from The Marriage of Opposites, one of my favorites of your books. We raised money at that time for Children's Hospital. And right. since this is all, you know, about going to people who like the Pine Hills and have interest in the Pine Hills, uh, maybe we'll get you back there someday. I'd love to come. Can I go to the spa while I'm there? Happy. Honey, a massage on us. We're going to Mirbo. All right. We'll get a massage and maybe we'll get a haircut. Oh, I need one. I know. Okay. I'll meet you there. All right. Until then. Thank you, Alice Hoffman. You're Thank awesome. You. Uh, until next time, my friend. See you soon.